What's up guys, Patrick here at Combat Athlete Physio and today we're going to be looking at the anatomy and biomechanics behind why you tap to the knee bar. Okay, before we get into the anatomy and the biomechanics, I just want to say that this video is going to be a little bit different than the last video. First, I've actually got a mic so it's going to sound a little bit better. Second, I'll still identify some of the anatomy in the Human Anatomy Atlas app, but then I'm going to incorporate a little bit more of a model and some videos to help you visualize certain things. Let's get into it. All right, so before we go into the anatomy, let's take a look at the knee bar performed in an actual fight. Here, Frank Mir starts to gain control of Brock Lesnar's knee. Even though Brock Lesnar tries to kick out, Mir hooks his ankle, securing the knee. Since he already has control over the ankle and Lesnar really isn't able to rotate his hips, all that's left for Mir to do is extend his hips. And in kind of the same way you would during an arm bar, this pushes Lesnar's knee into a hyperextension and ultimately forces him to tap. All right, let's take a look at the anatomy and we'll start with a view from the back of the knee We'll go to the outside of the knee and look at the LCL uh, and shortly after we'll go to the other side, the inside of the knee, look at the MCL. These two aren't super involved in the knee bar, but it still pays to know them. Now, once we get to the back of the knee under this articular capsule here, we'll see that the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus are kind of situated in between the two bones to absorb force. But the two main structures we want to look at are the cruciate ligaments otherwise known as the PCL, which I'll show you here first. Notice the attachments. We'll take a closer look later. And then the ACL. Now let's move over to a three-dimensional model of the knee to better understand how these ligaments move. All right, so here's the knee model and we're looking at the back of the knee. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna to point to is where the PCL starts, which is right on the back of the tibia or the bone at the bottom and it runs up in the middle of the groove there at the femur or the bone at the top. It also gives a little bit of an attachment to the lateral meniscus that you see there. Now in order to get a better view of the ACL we'll have to turn it around but first that's where the ACL actually starts on the back of the femur. Okay so let's turn the knee around and then we're going to take the kneecap out of the way and once we do that we can actually see where it comes through crosses the PCL and attaches at the front of the tibia. Okay, now let's see how it looks whenever we tension it as if it would be tensioned whenever we did a knee bar. So I'm going to take both of these and just pull the bones apart and tilt them away from each other and you can see the PCL starting to stretch. I'll give it another tug here and then in order to see the ACL, I'll turn the back of the knee towards the camera, pull apart and you can see the ACL right behind the PCL tightening up. So now that you've seen the ligaments involved, let's take a look at the muscular structures. So now for the muscles that cross the back of the knee. First we're going to start on the outside of the hip and identify the TFL, uh, or better known as the IT band. It actually turns into the IT band. Uh, so then we'll come up and look at the hamstrings, which most people know. You can see how they cross the hip and the knee when we zoom out. And the three hamstring muscles are biceps femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. Then we'll go into the inside of the thigh, and believe it or not, these guys actually play a pretty huge role when it comes to flexing the knee sometimes. Uh, so I felt like they were good to identify. We've got adductor, gracilis, and sartorius. And last, but definitely not least, we move down the leg to look at the muscle that everyone wants to grow but can't, the gastrocnemius. All right, so this time I thought I'd show you a little video clip of the muscles we just identified doing their actions. Okay, you can see that the muscles that we identified in the inner thigh, and then, the hamstring muscles are all involved in flexing the knee and one uncommonly known thing is that the, that calf muscle is actually involved as well, the gastrocnemius. And I want you to envision once it extends, if you're tapping because of muscle length, you're likely tapping due to tension in one of these three muscle groups. And now for my personal favorite, nerve tension. Uh, and even though the nerve, the sciatic nerve, starts as a collection of nerves that comes from the spinal cord, it runs all the way down the back of the thigh and into the knee and even crosses the ankle into the bottom of the foot as you'll see here later. But in order to better visualize how the sciatic nerve tensions in different positions, I've put together a little movement demonstration. So before you ask, yes, I used athletic tape and yes, I had to pull my pants tight in order to achieve this look. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, it's easy to see that the nervous system doesn't just start where we identified the sciatic nerve earlier. It runs all the way up the spine and into the skull, so when I bend forward, the nervous system is actually pretensioned. Then if I bring my hip, it tensions even more. And if I straighten my leg, it tensions even more. So once you get over the fact that it looks like I'm posing for my OnlyFans account, 
it becomes easier to visualize the way the sciatic nerve tensions with different joint positioning. So let's see what maximal sciatic nerve tension would look like in an actual fight. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to note is that Kenny Robertson is really high up on his back here. Uh, he's starting to throw in some hooks that he'll use later, but this is definitely not the usual way that you do the knee bar. Uh, now the position that I want to show you guys is actually just a little bit later. Uh, boom, right there. Okay, so if you remember what I was showing you earlier with the tape was going down my back, mimicking the sciatic nerve, he's in just a more pronounced version of that movement. So his back is bent, his knee is up close towards his, or his hip is close towards his stomach, his knee is straight, uh, and like we saw earlier, uh, we know that the sciatic nerve branches of the sciatic nerve actually run down to the bottom of the foot so he's even got his foot pointed towards the sky i think that this i mean you can see his knee is not even all the way extended so i think that he's actually tapping to nerve tension and whenever he taps he reaches back and grabs the back of the knee uh, and this just goes to show that if you position yourself in the proper way uh, nerve tension can be a, a really viable way to make somebody tap thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more anatomical and biomechanical breakdowns of different submissions or combat movements. And definitely feel free to comment below which ones you'd like to see next. For instance, if you want to see more striking or if you'd like to see some injury prevention techniques or just how to train, let me know and I'll put it on my list of videos to make. Also, if you haven't seen my video on the arm bar, make sure you go and watch it here. <laughs> it was my first video, so cut me just a little bit of slack. Well, that's it for this time. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again.